All right, so in this video, we're looking to classify uh, relative extrema now. Uh, so it's an extension of the, the extreme value section uh, that we were discussing uh, previously. Uh, and to do so, we're going to use uh, the second derivative test for relative extrema. And so it reads like this, uh, d equals f sub xx, f sub yy, this is multiplied, minus f sub xy squared. If this d value uh, is bigger than zero, less than zero, or equals zero, we have uh, some different answers. So if it's bigger than zero, this is where we have to investigate f sub xx, which would be this part right here. If that's bigger than zero, you have a relative minimum. If it is less than zero, you have a relative maximum. If d is less than zero, you have a saddle point. Uh, and so for the saddle point, uh, I mentioned this briefly when we discussed hyperbolic paraboloids earlier in the chapter and that this day was coming. Uh, I would encourage you to take a look at page uh, 852 to see exactly what the saddle point is. Um, it's neither a, a, a maximum or minimum because it depends on the direction that you travel along the curve to get to that point. The final thing would be d equaling zero. If d ends up equaling zero, the test is inconclusive, and then we would just need to figure out something else. Generally speaking, you would graph it, and you could take a look to see if it was a max or a min. Uh, but I don't anticipate any of these. Um, so these are the two really to be on the, out, the lookout for. All right, so we'll take a look at an example here. Uh, this is gonna be our surface. We're gonna find and classify any uh, relative extrema using the test uh, that we talked about a moment ago. Now, to make this happen, um, we're going to need, obviously, f sub x, f sub xx, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we're also going to need the points uh, that we need to test uh, to plug in to decide what they are. So that's going to bring us back to the idea of taking f sub x and setting it equal to 0, along with f sub y equals 0. So f sub x is going to give us a y minus 3x squared. f sub y would be x minus 2y. We'll set both of those equal to 0. You can see from this first one that y would equal 3x squared. So I'll take this and I'll plug it in for y, and then they'll have an equation of only x's that I can use. So then x minus 2 times 3x squared equals 0. So that'd be an x minus 6x squared equals 0. In other words, x equals 0 or x equals 1 sixth. Uh, taking these back in there, we'll get the point 0, 0, and we'll get the point 1, 6, 1, 12. And again, those are the points now that I'm going to need to use up into this thing. Now, as far as uh, this D goes, D is going to equal F sub XX. So that's going to be then the derivative of this with respect to X. So f sub xx, derivative of this guy with respect to x, which gives us a negative 6x. Then I have f sub yy, derivative of this with respect to y, which would be a negative 2. And then this guy right here, f sub xy. So that's going to be the derivative of f sub x with respect to y, which in this case is 1 and then squared. So now we'll test our points. D of 0, 0 means that every place I see an X, I put a 0, and every place I see a Y, I put a 0. And you can see that that is pretty quickly going to give us a negative 1 for an answer there. So negative 1 being less than 0 means that we have a saddle point. So a saddle point at 0, 0 um, on this surface. Then I'll move over and test out 1 sixth, 1 twelfth. And when I plug that in, that's going to be a negative 6 times 1 6. So this is going to be a negative 1 times a negative 2 and then minus 1. Uh, and that quantity is actually going to be bigger than 0. So if it's bigger than zero, this is the case where we had to go back and we had to look more closely at this f sub xx. And so this guy right here, this is our f sub xx. And for us, we evaluated at 1 6, 1 12th, ending up with this negative one. Since this guy, since negative one is less than zero, that means we have a relative maximum relative maximum at 
1 sixth, 1 twelfth. So this negative one that I have here, this was that f sub x, x that we mentioned from the previous screen. So it really is as simple as that when it comes to, um, to for looking for the critical points uh, and then to classify them. That's really all we're doing here with this guy is classifying it um, and following the, uh, the setup from the previous uh, screen. All right, so hopefully you found the last example a little more mechanical um, than maybe the one we looked at a couple videos ago where we had to decide uh, that it was a maximum because it opened downward. So a little bit of more of a mechanical approach. That being said, we can't escape that entirely. So we'll start the same way here, um, and we'll go ahead and study f sub x, which would be e to the y, f sub y, which would be x e to the y. And you can see if we set these equal to zero, um, we've got a little bit of a problem, right? Um, we can say that x equals zero, which is fine, but this guy right here doesn't have a solution. So because that doesn't work, we're gonna have to say no critical values and therefore no relative extrema. So if you can't get any critical values, again, we're on an open interval here, so we're really um, just at the mercy of these critical values. Uh, if you can't get any of these critical values, you're not gonna have any relative extrema on an, on an open region, open interval type problem like this. All right, another one we'll take a look at here. F of x, y equals y sine x. If we move forward with the same idea, f sub x, which is y cosine x, f sub y, which is gonna equal sine of x, setting it equal to zero. Uh, unlike the last one, here we have actually infinitely many solutions. So this guy here says that x is true for all k pi, but now what can y be? Well, the k pi would satisfy this. So if we take a k pi up here and plug it in for cosine of x, and this cosine at k pi will not be zero. So if I take this, this k pi, which it has to be, if I take it and I plug it in here, cosine of k pi is not zero, therefore y has to be zero. So y has to equal zero. Now again, we have infinitely many things to test, um, but we'll, let's see what happens when we actually put the test itself together. So the d would be f sub xx, so f sub xx would be derivative of this, oops, derivative of this with respect to x. So we're gonna have a negative y sine x. And then times f sub y y, derivative of this with respect to y, which would just be a zero. And then minus f sub xy, derivative of this with respect to uh, y, which would be cosine and then squared. So if we test D now at K pi comma zero, you can see this whole thing is wiped out. And all we're really dealing with now is a negative cosine squared. We know that cosine squared is bounded between zero and one and with a negative sign out in front of it, that's gonna imply that this uh, D is going to be less than zero no matter what. Therefore, we have saddle points at all places, k pi, zero. So even if you have something kind of weird work out uh, from the, the process, uh, there will always be ways to, uh, or should always be ways to handle it. Um, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm hoping there won't be any of these inconclusives that I talked about. I certainly wouldn't assign one um, when it comes to a quiz or an exam, uh, but be on the lookout in the homework in case my math lab does.